Guys, let's face it. Art does not pay the bills, unless you're drawing porn. In today's world, most artists either A, have a job to support themselves, B, go to school so they can eventually get a job to support themselves, or C, both. Now, for those of you who fall into either of those categories, you probably already know the struggle of balancing school and work with your art. It probably feels like there are just not enough hours in the day to get both things done. And as someone who has made art as both a college student and now corporate America employee, I figured I'd make this video to give you guys some tips and tricks on how you can balance your school work life with your passion projects. Because if you're anything like me, it can be a struggle finding both the time and energy to do both. And of course, these are just things I have personally implemented in my own life. Not everything is going to be applicable to everyone. So if you have your own tips and tricks, let us know in the comments. I'm sure someone will find it helpful. Okay, so first, let's talk about balancing school and art. Now, the first and foremost thing I'll say here is do not overload yourself with difficult classes. Now guys, take this from me. Back in high school, I was taking like 5 to 6 AP classes each year, and the only memories I have of that time are just ones of stress and misery. Now look, if your goal is to get into a prestigious college, then yes, go ahead and grind hard during your high school years. And yes, I know that taking AP classes in high school is a great way to save money on college courses later on, but just be careful not to bite off more than you can chew. You know it's good to build up a work ethic during your high school years but trust me when I say it's not worth your mental sanity and you're gonna have a hard time mustering the energy to draw if you're just constantly swamped with homework and exams all the time but where things get more dangerous is in college in high school you have a finite number of classes you could take in a given school year but when you go to college you can pretty much stack as many classes as you want in a given semester now for reference i went to the university of florida and during my time there the minimum number of credits needed to be considered a full-time student was 12 a semester and during my time there i would do like 12 or 13 credits each semester and it really wasn't bad i never felt swamped with homework or anything like that and i still graduated graduated earlier than anticipated but i knew some kids that were taking like 20 plus credits each semester and they were just constantly stressed out with homework and even to this day i'm like bro why would you do that are you like trying to speed run graduation or something and I forgot where I saw this, but I remember reading about how the depression and suicide rates for engineering students is like much higher compared to other majors. And if you've ever met someone majoring in engineering, you could probably understand why. A lot of these kids are just taking 16, 18, 20 plus credits a semester, and the majority of their classes aren't even the easy gen ed ones. It's like calculus, organic chemistry, physics, and basically just a recipe for anxiety. So it is currently summertime as I record this video, which means a lot of you students are in between grades or semesters. So if you're watching this video and you're kind of like, damn, you know what, Brave Bird? My schedule for the upcoming fall is a bit crazy. You know, if that's you, I would strongly urge you to call your guidance counselor and tell them to make it more bearable. And obviously we all have different limits. You know, I'm sure some of you are really smart and perhaps it's no big deal to you to take 20 credits, but I just wanted to bring this up because if you're constantly frying yourself mentally from exams and homework, it's gonna be hard to find the energy and time to do your art. Now the next piece of advice I want to give to all the student artists out there, particularly the college ones, is to find other students that create similar art to your own. So like an obvious example is if you're into pottery then join the pottery club now i started drawing around my junior year of college and admittedly this is something i could have done a better job at now as some of you may already know i enjoy making manga like comics and i've been to the anime club at uf a few times but most of the members there simply enjoy watching anime and not so much making their own manga but what i could have done is actually go on the ufl subreddit or something and just make a post there like yo what's up guys i'm a student here I enjoy making manga and comics. Do any of you guys do something similar? If so, let's link up. <laughs> And I think a lot of you guys would be surprised how many lonely college students there are. You know, not everyone is partying every day at a fraternity house and drinking themselves to near death. You know, a lot of other students are just locking themselves in all day, especially other artists, because it's like, 
art is not a very sociable hobby. Most artists are just locked in the room all day and just drawing or creating whatever it is they're working on. So you're not gonna just go outside and encounter them like some wild Pokemon. You know, you're probably gonna have to find them online somewhere. So yeah, that's how I would go about it if I were back in college. Now, if you're in high school and you don't have any sort of anime slash drawing club thing, and I'm assuming there's no subreddit for your local high school, then honestly, I would encourage you to just make the club yourself. It'll be a great resume booster when you apply to college, and I'm sure you'll make plenty of great friends. Now, the reason why I'm bringing up this entire point is because having people to discuss your ideas with is extremely valuable and motivating. Guys, if you were to call up all of your friends and family right now and tell them about your comics, story, or music ideas, I'm willing to bet most of them won't care. Or maybe they'll pretend to care for a little bit just so they don't seem like assholes, but generally they're not going to be as passionate about it as you are. And let me tell you, when you find someone who is also passionate about art and you're just able to constantly bounce story ideas off of one another and also talk about ways to make money from your art, I mean, that will motivate the hell out of you. Like even after a long day of work or school, you will still find the time to get your art done. Whereas on the other hand, if you have nobody to talk to and feel like there's nobody who cares about your ideas, it can be hard to stay motivated and you'll just keep delaying things. And just a quick shameless plug, if you're someone who has nobody to discuss your art ideas with, then follow me on X. I want to eventually do spaces where we just talk about all things art, anime, drawings, and I'll bring you guys up as speakers so we can just chop up ideas together. So if that's something you'd be interested in, drop me a follow. Now, let's talk about how to balance work with art. So for this segment, I'm going to assume that you have a full-time job, which is at least 40 hours a week, and you're not working remotely. In other words, you're getting off your butt and driving somewhere physically to work. So the first thing I would recommend here is investing in a tablet or sketchbook so you can draw after work. Now obviously if you're a traditional artist that uses a bunch of fancy materials, this probably isn't practical. But if you're a normal digital artist like me, this will help immensely because you can basically draw wherever you are. And obviously where you decide to do that depends entirely on your situation. For instance, it could be in your break room, at a library, Panera Bread, Starbucks. Just anywhere you can comfortably sit down and get your creative juices flowing. And look, if your job is super close to your house, by all means, just drive back and draw at home. But I'm willing to bet a lot of us here have a commute time of at least 30 minutes to our job. And for reference, my current job is about a 35 to 50 minute drive depending on traffic. And from my experience, whenever I would come home after a long day of work, you know, I tend to just want to sit on my ass and relax. I don't really have the energy for art. And this is where drawing on the go can really come in handy. But the most obvious example being that you can squeeze in some drawings during lunchtime, but I also find it very useful for when I'm done working. While I'm still in my work productivity mode, I could just go somewhere nearby, whip out my iPad, and start drawing. Now for some context, my job is located in a nice, high-rise corporate building, so I just go inside one of the conference rooms after hours and draw there. But of course I understand this is a bit of a luxury and not every one of you is going to be able to do that. You know, if you're working in retail at a restaurant or you're a trucker, it's not going to be that easy. So I won't harp on this point too much as I can only pretty much speak for myself here. But if this point isn't really applicable to you, like you can't really bring a tablet or sketchbook with you to work, you know, let me know why. I'd be curious to see how all our lives differ. Now the final and I guess more serious point on how to draw more efficiently as a full-time employee is to get rid of toxic people in your life. And to be honest, this advice can really be given to anybody, not just artists. But for the sake of this video, I'm just going to explain it through an artist's point of view. Now guys, if you're working a full-time job and working five days a week, you know, your days off are going to be extremely valuable and you really don't want to waste it with the wrong company. Remember how earlier I said that being around other like-minded artists can really motivate you to complete your projects? Well, conversely, if you're around negative and toxic people who don't care about your dreams and aspirations, I mean, that can actually be quite demotivating. But how can you identify these sorts of people? You know, what are some telltale signs that someone is negative and toxic? 
Well, obviously I'm only speaking from my own experience here, but the number one red flag that indicates someone is like this is if you feel emotionally and mentally drained after interacting with said individual. And if you feel your mood or vibe getting ruined every time you're around somebody, chances are you probably shouldn't be around them anymore. And this person could be a family member, co-worker, boss, spouse, you name it. They can exist in all parts of your life. Now again, looping back to art, you really need to avoid these sorts of people because 9 out of 10 times they will be the same person who brushes off any sort of artistic aspiration you may have. Oh bro, you wanna draw a comic? You wanna paint pictures? You wanna produce music? Oh come on bro, grow up. That's not realistic. Now obviously that's a more extreme example, what's more likely to happen is that they won't say anything demeaning outright like that, but you can tell by their facial expressions and mannerisms that they really don't give a shit. And to a degree that's fine, no one is gonna give a shit about your art as much as you need to give a shit about it. And keep in mind that there are just some people who won't understand your love and passion for art, like the left part of their brains is more dominant, like they don't get all the artsy fartsy stuff, and you know, it's nothing personal. But the main thing I'm saying here is make sure you're not associating with people that make you feel worse about yourself or emotionally drained because that can really impact your psyche in negative ways. If you're dealing with someone that's demeaning your dreams either blatantly or more passive aggressively, you know, you deserve better than that. Hit the eject button on that relationship and don't ever be around someone who demoralizes you like that. And hey, if you have to choose between being alone or being around shitty people, then be by yourself. You know, if you can't enjoy your own company, then how can you expect other people to? So yeah, this is obviously something I feel quite passionate about and can honestly talk about it forever. But I don't want to make this video too much of a self-help generic video like that. And guys, please let me know, was anything I said in this video relatable or was I just schizo rambling the entire time? <laughs> Be honest, it won't hurt my feelings. And you know what, to all my UF students and alumni out there, I want to wish you a great rest of your day. And to everyone else, well... Kill yourself.